So I watched 365 Days, a Polish erotic drama which recently came out on Netflix. 365 Days, or I'm not even going to attempt that, is essentially Fifty Shades of Grey if it was chewed up, spat out and hastily put back together again. So where do we begin? And there will be spoilers from here on out, so do be aware, I guess. We start off strong, seeing our male lead staring at a woman through some binoculars. Tommy! How's the peeping? The guy and his mafia father then get shot, which is a massive shame, I guess. We then skip to five years later, where Creeper McCreeperson is still alive, being the head of the mafia family. And the woman he was creeping on is some executive lady called Laura. Now, Laura here is a terrible, terrible person. She's entitled, shallow, and is just unnecessarily mean to her boyfriend, who does say some obnoxious things, but doesn't exactly warrant her constant verbal abuse. Laura and her boyfriend and friends go on holiday to Italy for her birthday. At some point, she storms off for some reason and runs into Mr. Creepy. How are you lost, baby girl? <laughs> the next day, we witness Laura continue to be an awful person because she's not the centre of attention. She storms off again does a bit of crying, gets lost, and then gets kidnapped. So far we have two awful leads, both seemingly having the acting ability and the charisma of a wet mop. I also can't remember the creepy guy's actual name at this point, and I don't want to learn it. Laura wakes up in Creepy McCreepy Faces mansion, aimlessly wanders around, finds a massive framed photo of her. We get another... Are you lost, baby girl? And she faints. She faints a lot. She wakes up and Mr. Creepy tells her that he's kidnapped her because she's the one he saw on the beach the day he got shot and he's been obsessed with her ever since and has been trying to find her. So now he has her, he's going to keep her for 365 days. Oh my god, it's the name of the movie. If she doesn't fall in love with him after a year, he will let her go, but... We all know that she is going to fall in love with him because movie. We then get this great moment where he's all like, I won't do anything without your permission, whilst he's groping her. And at this point, I decided that I needed alcohol to get myself through this movie. One mojito later. Listen to me. I'm not a bag of potatoes that you can transfer without my permission. <sighs> One bottle of wine later. Yay, this is what we really want right now, a shopping montage. The bag of potatoes half-heartedly tries to escape again and we get another Are you lost, baby girl? <laughs> that line makes my skin crawl. There's just so little chemistry between the couple. At one point, the film tries to convince us that Don Creepy only has a sensitive side, despite the fact that he has kidnapped and assaulted Laura, and we've also seen him kill a guy. I like you. Why is this romantic? The potato gets her laptop and phone back and she calls her mum and instead of saying, Hi, I've been kidnapped. Get Polish SWAT on this mofo now. She tells her that she's fine. Yay, Stockholm Syndrome. Lara just doesn't make any sense. One moment, she's all over Mr. Creepy and then making out in the shower and then literally the next scene, she's being dragged against her will and tied up on a plane. And now we have this masterful scene. Jesus Christ, he actually has a painting of himself with a lion. This guy's just so irresistible. Ugh. I don't want to get into this scene, it's really gross. But the entire time you see this painting in the background and you're expected to find this guy sexy, I don't know why. There's this nightclub scene. Tony Creek Tana is pissed at Laura for some inane reason. She's left to her own devices. And instead of, I don't know, running away, she flirts with a guy, gets drunk, is harassed by another guy, and then the creep shows up last minute and saves her. All of a sudden, they're now on this yacht, and we find out that the guys that Don Creepioni put his guns out on was a rival mafia family, and he's now started a war with them. You'd think if he was head of a mafia family that he'd not be a complete imbecile, but whatever. He's angry, she's angry, and they fight... She falls off the boat and he saves her. She must have hit her head really hard because when she wakes up, she decides to have sex with him. And it is a unnecessarily graphic sex scene, which then turns into an unnecessarily graphic sex montage. Now, I don't mind sex scenes in films if they assist in the story or in a character's development. If sex is an important part of the plot, then have at it, I guess. But here... 
the sex scenes don't drive the plot in any way, you could take out these scenes and the film wouldn't be changed in the slightest. Say what you will about the Fifty Shades series, you know, the series 365 Days is trying so hard to emulate. Sex is an important story of these films. And dare I say it, the exploration of sexuality is an overarching theme of the franchise. Albeit a shallow exploration, but regardless, the sex scenes in Fifty Shades of Grey serve a purpose to the story. Also, this may just be me being a prude, but the sex scenes in 365 Days are so tasteless and gratuitous that it actually made me sick at times. And then with only 30 minutes left of the film, I really needed another break. Several bottles of wine later. Without warning, they're at this masquerade ball. Because the film wants to be Fifty Shades of Grey so bad, it's actually really sad. So Mr. Creepy sends Laura back to Poland because reasons. Laura goes to see her friend who is like, Oh my god, where were you? I thought you were kidnapped. Yes, she was! Great friend. There's this BFF bonding montage. Laura is now blonde, okay. She runs into the ex who follows her back to the hotel and the fantastic Mr. Creep is waiting for her there. Do you have any idea what I've been through? They profess their love for each other. I don't need 365 days. Mission accomplished. He asks her to marry him. I don't think they've even known each other for more than two weeks at this point. When she takes her to meet his parents, we get this gem. Don't tell them exactly what you do. I'm a gangster. We have this really boring, oh, we're so in love montage. I think she finds out she's pregnant. I know at this point I checked out. The plot remembers that there's supposed to be a mafia war happening. And Mr. Creepy finds out that there's been a hit put out on Lara, who we see drive into a tunnel and... Oh, it's so tragic. I'm so sad. Oh, no. 365 Days is shallow, abysmally written, and occasionally hilarious. It's a rip-off of a rip-off, and is so shameless about it that you spend the entire time cringing. In fact, the author who wrote the book that this is based on, yeah, this is based on a book, has even admitted that she ripped off, sorry, I mean was inspired by Fifty Shades of Grey. I guess if you're a trash person that enjoys poorly judged, unoriginal and just plain stupid movies, then this is right up your street, I guess. Oh, thank Christ. I'm done with this film and I never have to think about it ever again. Oh, for f Congratulations if you made it this far into the video. Hopefully that means there was something in here that you enjoyed. If there was, please leave a like. If there was something that you agreed with or disagreed with, please leave a comment. Or if there's a film that you'd like me to watch, whether it's something I'll like or dislike, please leave it there as well. I'm hoping to maybe make videos on a semi-regular basis, or at least until I get bored. But thanks for watching, and we'll hopefully see you soon. I am not good at this sign-off stuff. <laughs>